In my last manga review, I promised I was going to address um, this character. Now, there's a, a little issue involving her name. When Sailor Moon was brought to North America, the first thing to come out was actually her doll. I think I've shown you in another video. Um, her doll was released as Kaori Knight. That's, well, you see the spelling at the bottom of the screen there. And not much information was given. A lot of people thought this was a typo. When Cloverway got a hold of the anime and produced it in 2000, her name was the same. It was Kaori Knight. And then for scenes where she was not in civilian form, it was Kaori Knight. Now you might be wondering why then they would change it to Kaori Knight. Kalo well, that's actually how her name is supposed to be spelled, and how it was spelled on a lot of Japanese trading cards. Keep in mind, Japanese R and Japanese L are essentially the same letter, so they're not. So there's a, an issue as to what you should and should not say. That's why when the manga came out, a lot of people were concerned if Princess Serenity was going to remain Serenity or become Selenity because even the trading cards in Japan mixed this up. Now, if you want to know how to pronounce her name, you have to watch the first anime. Kaori her name was pronounced Kaori And as you can hear, there's there's no real way to tell if that should be an L or an, an L or an R. Well, it actually should be an L. So her name is Kaori Naitokun. Now as for these folks, oh boy, this is about to get more sticky. Okay, so when The Witches 5 came out, there was a big stink about what their names should be. And again, even the Japanese merchandise consistently get it wrong. And that's the official merchandise, not the bootlegs. So... Let's just run down the names as they appear here. These are the correct names. They're in both the Tokyo Pop and in the Kodansha versions. Mimete, Ideal, Bluey, Telu. That's a nice camera shot there. And Sipring. And you may be wondering if this is a drawing error. It's not. That's her twin sister. And we're going to learn much more about her in the next book. Now... When Sailor Moon S was coming to the States, there was a big fat problem of what exactly were we going to call these people? Cloverway had one hell of a time with it, and that's unfortunate because they're actually a division of Toy, meaning that they should have had translators on staff that would know how to deal with it. And they just didn't. So for the English version, and unfortunately this carried over with the subtitles as well, Mimette became Mimet. And that's the best one of the group. Ideal, whose name is very easy to find in the anime, became Eugeal, which sounds kind of like a boy's name, like if Eugene throws up. The Louis name was so mangled that in some scenes they just tried to dub it out altogether. She was called Birut, Biruit, Birui, Biri, Birdie. Oops, that's another character. They tried everything to say her name, and they couldn't figure out how to say it. But Valui is how you're supposed to say it. Telu retained her name in some scenes of the one and only episode she appears in, and then in other scenes they called her Tellum, which is not even close. They couldn't even figure out what to do about the episode card. Then there were these two. Oh, good lord. Now, Sipring... I do believe you're supposed to say her name Sipring, because that's how it's said in the anime, and she doesn't last long enough for me to think otherwise. As for her twin sister, well, we're just going to have to wait one more book for that story. This is pretty cute. In some of the scenes early on in this, you're going to see Hotaru drawn with the exact same kind of eyes as Jibiosa and Sailor Moon and the rest of them. For some reason, though, the further deep into her story, the more her eyes change. And this is actually how her eyes are going to look for the rest of the series. Ooh. 
Oh, I don't think I like the way she was looking at Jibiosa there. Now, for some people who maybe didn't catch up with this part of the story, um, you might be a little bit curious about Hotaru's actions early in this book. Usually, she's a very sweet-tempered, shy little girl, but when she's around Kaori, and that's how her civilian name should be spelled, Kaori, she takes on a whole other personality. She's very spiteful. She's very much, you know, stay the hell away from my family. And you might be wondering, well, where does this nasty attitude come from? It doesn't even sound like Hotaru. Well, let me explain a few things about her. First and foremost, Hotaru is not what she seems. I know she looks a lot older to some of you. You can stop writing the fanfiction now. She's 12. That's why I get really creeped out when I see fan art of her. She is 12 years old. Please get that through your head. Please, I'm begging you. Uh, Hotaru is just a few years removed from a terrible accident, which you're going to read more about in the next book, in which she was killed and brought back. Her mother was just plain killed. Kaori was killed and brought back, and her father went insane. And you're going to learn more about that in the next couple of books. Uh, when she was brought back, though, she wasn't just brought back as Hotaru. She already had the sleeping soul of Sailor Saturn inside of her, but you're going to learn in the next couple of books she's also Mistress Nine. And that's the separate entity. Now, let's merge three souls of three entirely different people into the body of a 12-year-old whose body is surgically being enhanced straight through puberty. Um, yeah, there are some issues that a Nutter Butter can't fix. This is in the Tokyo Pop version as well, and this is why I really prefer the manga over the anime. If you've been a fan of Moon Sisters for a while, you notice that I do not refer to Usagi and Mamoru's relationship as, oh, these are these folks and here's Jibiosa, like most websites. No, I acknowledge them as her parents. And you might be wondering why. Well, the manga is actually why. They didn't do this so much in the anime, but Usagi and Mamoru treat her as their daughter once they know who she is. They no longer look at her as some bratty, crazy little kid with a shotgun. They look at her as their daughter. And you can really see how well that's drawn here. I mean, here, every parent has had this nightmare. You have to help me with my homework. <clears throat> every time I've ever asked a parent for help, I've gotten this exact reaction. <laughs> and I just think this is so clever and so cute that you see them interacting with her in a more realistic manner, you know, Mamoru has actual expression, things he doesn't usually have in the anime. I hope they retain this for the new one. Now, while the first anime introduces the concept of the Holy Grail to us via a segment involving Professor Tomoe, yeah, that's how you're supposed to say his name, too, Chibiosa actually introduces the concept of the Holy Grail. The bad guys don't actually know about this thing to begin with. Not exactly on their agenda in the manga, I just thought that was interesting, and that's going to play a big role in the next book. In case anybody is curious, in the Tokyo Pop version, they have this habit of taking out a lot of pronouns and adverbs to make it, again, a little more slainy. So here, Mamoru tells Isagi, you know, it's okay, you can stay the night. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the Kodansha print, it's like, you too can stay over. Mm -hmm. Well, you might be wondering, well, doesn't that kind of break up the romantic mood? No. In case you're wondering, Mamoru has another room in the apartment. That's where Little Squirt is staying. Where's Mom going to sleep? <laughs> the English books bring back the translation notes, and you're going to need these to figure out some of the newer characters brought about in book number six. And then we get a preview of Sailor Moon number seven. And I really get the impression that there's a reason why everybody kind of gets, gives up on Motoki after a while. I mean, it's it's not because of Reika, who I, I've never been a fan of. I, I don't actually like her. You know, and if you, if you get this, he is warned repeatedly. She warns him in this panel. Hmm, the two of them found something unusual around Sankakasu. And they're investigating the environment. Reika-san, let's go eat at Sankakas. There's a, there are fashionable buildings and restaurants all over. Now this is what Reika is looking at. 
Rika-san? Aha! Uh, uh, say, why don't we go someplace else? Why is that? I mean, look, those weird ba black cow uh, clouds hanging over Sanka Kus. It's a little scary for me. Ha ha, Reika, you're such a fraidy cat. That's kind of cute. No, you dits. That's not cute at all. Those clouds look like the monsters that keep coming out of everybody's clothes. That's not cute at all. Go eat somewhere else. Eat at McDonald's for crying out loud. It's because of this sheer, sheer stupidity of him walking right into danger that leads me to believe that even this girl eventually just gives up on him. Now, I recently got a question in my email box. Which comics should you buy first? Should you go for these because they're older or these because they're newer? I say that if you're a brand new Sailor Moon collector, start with this one because you are getting a complete translation, no slang added, completely literal script. And then, if you still have some money left over, then migrate over to the other books. These books are still pretty hard to find, and the prices are starting to go up because there's less of them. Keep in mind, these stopped being made in 2005. With these, they're still in print, and there's going to be another printing very soon of this one. So, I have some links at the bottom of the video. Please check them out. And let me know if you get your books.